In this video, I will show you the Adobe Photoshop Generative Fill AI tools. Let's get started. And at the end of this video, I'll give you a glimpse of the beta version of Adobe Photoshop and some of the generative fill options that you have there. But let's start out right here in the June 2024 version of Adobe Photoshop. And I'm just going to start by going to File and open. And I'm just going to go here to my downloads folder where I have some example images that I would like to use. My first example is going to be of some people at the Grand Canyon. They're listening to a lecture and so that you can see this better I'm going to hold control on the keyboard and tap 1 and that will zoom in on the image. On a Mac I think it's command 1 to do this kind of a zoom. But with this image it's a beautiful image but let's say I would like to add some things to this image and I want to use AI to do that. I also may want to remove some things from this image. Let's start by adding something using Generative Fill AI tools. The first step is to go over here to the Tools panel here at the left and choose the Lasso tool. Notice that there's a keyboard shortcut for it, just the L key. So if I tap and hold L, if you look closely at the mouse pointer, it's the Lasso tool. Now if I don't want to keep holding L to keep the Lasso tool there, I can just click here at the left on the Lasso tool. So now I'm going to click and drag to outline an area of this image. And underneath that selection that I just made, I get a pop-up with some options. And one of the options says Generative Fill. So I'm going to click there. And what would I like to generate? I would like to add a bald eagle to this image. I'll click Generate and let's see the results. Now what Adobe's generative AI is doing here is it's looking at the surrounding area of the image and it's gonna to try to put an image of a bald eagle that will kind of fit with the look and feel of this image. It's not gonna be perfect, but there we have the result. And I actually get three options to choose from. I can click these arrows to go from option one to option two to option three. Now you may notice it's also affecting the image of the actual canyon. So that's something to keep in mind as well, which one looks the best to you. I think I like the first one best. And if I zoom out again, and I'm just gonna use control minus to do that. I'll just tap it a couple of times. I think it makes it look even better when it's zoomed out a little bit so you maybe don't notice some of the imperfections of the generative fill. So that's pretty cool, I think. Sometimes you get better results than others, but at least I can put a bald eagle, which are very rare, into this photo if I want to. Now, one little detail that you may want to know. If you're trying to keep the file size of your image to be kind of small and manageable, you may want to go in and delete the options that you're not going to go with. So I don't want option two. So I'll just go here to these three dots and choose delete variation and I'll do the same with the third variation and by deleting these variations that you don't want it helps keep your file size more manageable. All right, let's look at another kind of generative fill, I guess you could call it. But instead of actually adding something to this image, I'm going to remove something, or specifically somebody. Let's say that this person here, this gentleman, I want to um, actually just take him out of this image. So I'll just click and drag around the outline of his body and I'll complete the oval there. And then where it says generative fill, I'll click, but I'll just type the word remove and tap enter on the keyboard. It says it's generating and it is. It's gonna generate what Photoshop thinks this image would look like if he weren't in it. And look at the results. It looks beautiful. I think that looks fantastic. It totally fits in well. And if I click through the arrows, we get some alternatives. I think all three options look great. I'm gonna go with the first. So once again, I probably should click to delete the other variations. So I know many people that are reluctant to use Adobe Photoshop. They think it's very difficult and it does look intimidating and some people find it kind of hard to learn. But I think these AI generative tools, Generative Expand, which I show in another video, and Generative Fill, they really should open up Adobe Photoshop for the general user to use it and to start learning how Photoshop works. And I think it makes the tool so much more user friendly and easy to get started. And in the case of Generative Fill, just use this lasso, draw out your area, click Generative Fill, and type in what you would like to be placed in that area. Okay, now that I'm done making these changes to this image, I can just go here to File and choose Export, 
quick export as PNG. That's one of the best ways to export your creations in Photoshop. And I'm just gonna save this to the downloads folder and I'll change the file name just a little bit and click save. And here we have the final image saved to my computer. All right, I'm gonna X out of that. And now let's switch to the beta version of Adobe Photoshop. And here it is. And the reason I want to show you this beta version is because it has some new next generation AI tools. And these tools will show up soon in the full standard version of Adobe Photoshop. So again, I'm gonna go here to file, open, I'm gonna to go to my downloads folder and I'm gonna choose another image that I would like to alter by using artificial intelligence. So here it is, it's a scene from Hawaii. I'll hold control and tap one to zoom in, maybe not quite that far. So control minus to zoom out again a bit. And so this beta version of Photoshop, it uses the latest version of Adobe Firefly to help with the AI generative fill. Okay, once again, I'm gonna click over here on the lasso tool, and then I'm gonna click and drag to outline an area just like that. I'll click Generative Fill, and I'm gonna type Blue Whale. I'll click Generate, and Photoshop's AI is working now to generate an image of a whale coming out of the ocean, and let's see the results. That's pretty good. I could click here to look at the alternatives. We have a couple different alternatives. Ooh, I like that one the best. Another feature that you'll find in the beta version of Photoshop is Remove Background. So here in this image, I like how it's looking, but if I go over here to the right in this panel, you can see that I have a layers area, and right now I have the blue whale layer selected. I'm gonna switch to the background layer. Now that that's selected, look at my AI prompt tool. It's changed. I can now click remove background and let's see what happens. It's using artificial intelligence to do not really a generative fill, but a generative remove, which is related. So now what I can do is replace the background that was there with an imported background. So I could click here on import background and maybe I'll pick that same Grand Canyon lecture image and look what it did. It kind of combined the two images. So that's certainly one way you could replace the removed image. I'm gonna click that little undo button that was up here at the top because I want you to see generate background and what it will do. I could just click generate and have Adobe Photoshop just pick something that makes sense. Let's try that. It's generating a new background that should fit the look and feel of the rest of the image. And it worked pretty well. Once again, I get three options. There's the second and there's the third. All pretty similar. I'm gonna undo those options as well because instead of just letting Adobe Photoshop do its own generating, I can describe exactly what I want and I'm gonna type hot air balloons in a mostly clear sky. Click generate and let's see the results. There's option one, pretty good, option two, and option three. None of these are perfect, but I like option two the best. And of course, I could then continue to work on this image and improve it, including removing some of these that uh, just look kind of weird. I can just type in remove and take them out. So I hope in this video you've been able to see some of the great AI tools that are available in the current version of Adobe Photoshop and also in the beta. Some of these new features are coming to the main Adobe Photoshop version in the near future. If you want to learn more about Adobe Photoshop, please watch my other videos on that topic, including my video on the Adobe Generative Expand tools. They're fantastic. But in the meantime, I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you did, please like, follow, and subscribe. And when you do, click the bell and you'll be notified when I post another video. If you'd like to support my channel, consider becoming a channel member. Or you can click the thanks button or support me through my Patreon account or by buying channel merch and you'll see information about those options in the description below the video.